Good afternoon, good morning, good whenever it is that you're watching this. Today we're going to start talking about the human population and how it affects the ecosystem. So if you will turn to page 10 of your ecology notes, that's where we're going to get started. And I will tell you that the first two numbers on your notes are actually incorrect, so I need to make sure that you correct them. The current population of the United States is um, 313 million point 313.9 million. We're gaining about one person every 17 seconds here in the United States. In the world we have over 7 billion people. 7 billion 256 million 232,000 and about 55 people as of Monday afternoon whenever I recorded this. Now if you take a look um, here, the red dots represent where people live. So 2,000 years ago, there were some people in um, China, there were some people in India, there were a few people scattered here and there throughout Europe, but there really wasn't anybody here in America. Um, you can see that the human population has grown as our um, planet has gone through some different ages. In the old Stone Age, we had hunters and gatherers. We started to see some cave art. Okay, then we had what we call the Agricultural Revolution. In the Agricultural Revolution, man started using um, seeds and planting seeds and gathering those seeds um, and started having livestock. Then we started seeing some irrigation. We started seeing the industrial era. So as you can see, as we've made technological advances, our population has increased in size. Um, like I said, our population has surged because of tools and fire, the ag revolution, the industrial revolution, the medical revolution. And if you look here, we're projecting that by the year 2050, just a moderate projection puts us at about 9 billion people here on Earth. A high pr projection puts us at about 10.5 billion, and a low projection is going to put us right about where we are now. Now, humans are the only organism that can increase their carrying capacity. Big question is, how do we do that? And at what expense? In order to increase our carrying capacity, we've got to make sure that we've got a lot of resources. So we're using up all the resources that we have available to us. We're also getting rid of any competition that we might have. So how does cutting down trees affect the carbon cycle? What do we know about trees? What is their job? They take CO2 out of the atmosphere, take it in, and produce oxygen for us. Well, how does CO2 get into the atmosphere? Um, CO2 is going to get into the atmosphere through us, okay? If we cut down all the trees, we're going to have increased levels of CO2, which means we're going to have acid rain, um, we're going to have more global warming, we're going to have more erosion, we're going to have habitat destruction. Now, as a reminder from Earth Science, I want to remind you that the greenhouse effect is something that occurs naturally here on Earth. Basically, our ozone, or our atmosphere, acts as a blanket on us. So whenever the sun hits the ocean, it bounces, the radiation bounces into the atmosphere and comes back down to us. Now, in the summertime, you might sleep with just a few blankets on. Okay, maybe some sheets, a thin blanket. Now, in the wintertime, you sleep with a much heavier blanket usually because you want to hold in more heat. Well, what we're doing is we're adding to this atmosphere by cutting down these trees and by burning more and more fossil fuels to add CO2 to our atmosphere. Okay, this is an effect of acid rain. If you look at these trees, you see that they don't really have any limbs because the acid in the rain has eaten it all away. And we've talked about bioaccumulation before through pesticide use. Now, let's talk about the carbon cycle real quick. It starts with photosynthesis. The trees, the plants, take in CO2, and they use that to make sugars and also oxygen. Then the consumers take in that oxygen. They also take in those sugars from those plants, and they make CO2. So it's a big cycle that they go through. Um, we have to have bodies of organisms, all bodies of organisms have carbon molecules in them when they die or they decompose. And then those carbon molecules go down into the ground and they start to build fossil fuels. So I want you to think about this. If plastic is made of fossil fuels and fossil fuels are made of dinosaurs, then the plastic dinosaurs that you played with when you were a kid were made of real dinosaurs. Think about it. 
Now, CFCs, this is a phrase that they love to use on the EOC. CFC just stands for chlorofluorocarbons. They're added into the atmosphere by refrigerants, aerosols, and some consumer waste. Now, humans also help to put species into the environment where they shouldn't be. An invasive species is a species that's introduced to a community and an ecosystem by humans, and it doesn't naturally start out there. Um, now, the problem with this is that they don't have any natural predators, so they're going to outcompete the native species, and they're just going to kind of take over. That's it for our notes today. Um, make sure that as you took notes, you have um, paused, you've rewound, you've gone back and made sure that you have everything filled out. You've also taken care of all the vocabulary that um, we have so that that way you can get that extra credit. If you have any questions, make sure that you come to me and talk to me. Otherwise, I can't wait to see you soon. Bye.